Hey guys, how are you? I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving and um, we're settled into December now. And I thought a good assignment for this week would be to do this little gnome drawing that I was kind of playing around with for a couple days. Um, it's kind of a cute little snowy winter scene um, with a gnome and some stars and the moon. Um, for this assignment, you're gonna need your pencil, your Sharpie, and the um, oil pastels. Okay, so go ahead and get your things and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, looking forward to it. Okay guys, so we're gonna start our gnome drawing. The very first thing that I want you to do is we're going to um, take our pencil and put it kind of in the middle of the left side of our paper. And then we're going to lightly draw a hill line that goes you know, a little bit diagonal. And then we are going to start with our gnome right in the middle of our page, right where our line is. We're gonna put our gnome's nose. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys how to do both male and female um, so that you can draw whichever you prefer. Um, okay, so we're going to start with our nose and erase out the line in the center. And then we're going to do a hat. So this hat is drooping over top of our nose. So it's going to sag down like that. And it's kind of like a Santa hat. So it's going to have this white ruff. And that's what this is right now. It's the white ruff. It's coming down the side. Now we're gonna draw the actual hat. So we're gonna start about right here. And we're just gonna kind of squiggle this line. It's gonna be a silly hat. And it's gonna kind of go left and right, and left and right, and then finally hook over like this. Um, and it's gonna get skinnier as it goes up. Something like that. And then we're gonna put a little puff ball like that. Okay, now for the female body, we're gonna start kind of at the edge of the hat and have two lines that kind of slant out a little bit. And then create a curve at the bottom. Now, if you were doing the male gnome, you would basically do the same thing, except I'm gonna sketch over top of this. The, instead of this, so right now this is the bottom of her dress. If you were to do the male gnome, this would be the beard. So you would maybe kind of, you know, have it come to a little bit of a point, kind of like that, instead of the dress, okay? Okay, so again, I'm gonna work with my female version. At this point, I'm going to, to draw the star. Now, I think the bigger the star, the better. And my star is gonna be at an angle. Okay. Now, if you've never drawn a star before, um, one way to, to draw a star would be to draw a V. Or, I'm sorry, an upside down V. And then put a line through near the top. Take this edge and draw a line to that point. And then take this edge and draw a line down to that point. Okay, so if you've never drawn a star before, that's a good way to do it. Um, and then after you do that, you would um, erase these lines where they intersect. Okay, and then you can fix the shape a little bit as you need to. Okay, so I have my star in the middle of my, my outfit. And this is a star that the gnome is holding. Like it's a, I'm sort of pretending that the stars have fallen out of the sky 
and that their friends and they're playing with a gnome out in the snow. Okay, it's like a magical evening or something. So she's holding on to one of the stars. And so now we're gonna do the hands. The hands are gonna be just little ovals. Okay, and then she's also wearing a red dress or he or she is gonna be wearing a red outfit um, with white on the, the end of the sleeve here. So I'm gonna make a little kind of furry, either like a rounded rectangle or an oval. And then I'm going to erase any lines from the star that are inside of those. Okay, and then we are going to do the top part of the arm. So from this white part of the sleeve, we're just gonna come out like that. And same on this side. And then with this, we're gonna do the bottom part. We're gonna extend just a little bit beyond our clothing line here. And then make an arm come down from the side. Like that. And again, let's go back in and erase these lines out of our image. Okay, so if you're doing the girl gnome, um, we're just going to leave it like that for the moment. If you're doing the um, male gnome, you might wanna put like a little indication of a line, I don't know, something like that to show his arms, you know, the top part of his arms. It's not vital, but if you want to, you can do that. If you're doing the female though, we actually don't need to do that because her hair is going to go right there where her line, that line of her arm would be. So you can do any style of hair that you want. Um, I think I'm just gonna have like, like a lock of hair coming down. In earlier versions, I had played with different kinds of ponytails and braids. Um, you know, play around with it to get the shape the way you want it to be. Something like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And I'll raise that line out. Okay, now we're gonna do the feet. Now our girl gnome is sitting down and her feet are pointing up. So these are the bottoms of her feet, her, of her shoes. Okay, and if you want to, you can put like a little point at the top. I think that's kind of fun. Now this is for your girl gnome. Your boy, I guess, could really do the same, but um, what I found works best for the boy, so if this is your, here's your gnome, here's his hat, and here's his little beard hanging down. Um, what you could also do for the male gnome is have his, like he's kind of like doing the splits almost. Um, he has his little legs out here to the side of his beard. So you can do his little feet like that, and then a line like that if you wanted to, to show the, the bottom of his legs, okay? And again, with both of those, go ahead and erase any lines that are showing. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so um, guys, you know, I'm gonna show you um, another alternative hairstyle for the girl gnome. Um, it'll be real quick. This is one that I did yesterday that I also really liked. I just did a series of ovals and um, small circles, bigger ovals and smaller circles. And I kind of like how that turned out. I think for mine, I've decided I wanted to go ahead and do that.
Okay, so there's her hair. Let's fix our star. Okay, now on the bottom of her feet, on the bottom of her shoes, I'm gonna go ahead and put a star. Um, you don't have to, but I just thought it would be fun since her little feet are sticking up to have some kind of a, I don't know, decoration maybe on the bottom of her shoes. Something like that. Okay. Um, before we move on to the moon and the sky, I want to go ahead and put some some curved lines in her hat. These are um, just a stripey pattern. If you want to do a different type of pattern, that's fine. Or if you want to leave it a solid color, that's fine as well. So now I'm gonna come up here and do my moon. The way that I think the moon works best is if you do your best to draw a perfect circle. You can also find something to trace if you're really, really not feeling confident about your circle, okay? But there's my circle. Now I want my moon to be at an angle kind of like this. So I'm going to Kind of draw a line through there like that okay and then i'm going to take basically this point and draw my inner part of my moon right here but then i'm also going to extend it out just a smidge beyond that line then go ahead and make this side a little bit darker. Okay, then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna erase this line in this half of the circle and just clean it up a little bit. Okay, so here's my moon. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is add a nose. So I'm gonna start about right here. I'm gonna come out and then come back in like that and erase this line out. And then I'm gonna have a curved eye right there because he's sleeping and a little smile that's just gonna come up like that. He's in a happy little sleep. Okay. And um, I'm also going to tie a little rope around him here and have a little star dangling down. So I have my little rope like that and my star. And I'm also gonna put a little expression on this star, just two little eyes and a real small little mouth. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a couple more stars in the sky. They can be bigger or smaller, it doesn't matter. And it really doesn't matter how many you have either. Just do whatever you like. I'm actually just gonna put three for right now because I also have a couple stars on top of my Christmas trees and a couple more stars in the foreground. So I personally think three is enough, but you know, you can do more if you want, it's up to you. Okay, so that's our sky. Now this line that we made over here is our ground line. And I want to just do a very light, just sort of a, a squiggly line to sort of show where the treetops are, like way out in the distance. She's sitting in the middle of a field and there's some trees in the background.
I'm not sure if I've done evergreen trees with you guys before. Um, if I have, or if you know how to do a more detailed evergreen tree, you're certainly welcome to do that. I had done a more detailed one in my previous versions, but since this is so fun and playful, I think it's okay to have a more cartoonish, playful tree. And I'm gonna put a tree or a star on the top of my tree. Okay, and then erase my lines out. Something like that. And now that tree is kind of behind her. I'm gonna do a smaller one that's up here next to her, almost like that's a little friend as well. And, um, you know, I hadn't done that in the previous one. I just drew this line, not really even thinking about it. And that's just kind of to mark out where I want my tree to be. Um, you know, I think I actually want it to be just a tiny bit higher, maybe above that tree line. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you guys where you put your tree. But I just want this one to be a little bit closer to her. Maybe like a little Charlie Brown Christmas tree. A little tiny tree trunk at the bottom. And then I'm gonna erase that line out as well as any other lines that are in my tree. Okay, now I'm gonna put a star on top of my tree. So I've got my two trees, my gnome, moon, three stars. Now I'm gonna do two more stars down here. Now I'm gonna make these a little bit more playful. You can do whatever you want on yours, but I kind of want these to look, or to, to feel more animated, almost like they're, you know, alive. Like these are their little arms, almost like Patrick Starfish. Like these are their little arms. And they've got little feet, you know, because I, I want to feel like these are kind of coming down and hanging out with her for the evening. They're here to play. Okay, something like that. It might be a little bit too high. But just play around with it a little bit and um, see what you come up with. And if you're not comfortable with that, a regular star is perfectly fine. Then I'm going to do another one over here. little eyes and a little mouth. Sometimes it's fun to do the mouth off center. It just gives it a little bit more of an, I don't know, a little bit more of a personality or an expression kind of. Okay, and that's our basic drawing. Um, I'm going to outline a little space where there's gonna be a shadow. Um, if you think of the moon being our light source and shining down this way, um, it's going to kind of be on this side of our gnome and this side of our tree and then this side of this tree. So I'm going to kind of just lightly sketch out a little area just so that I'm aware of where that is when I'm coloring. Okay, but right now this is our pencil drawing. And if you guys missed anything, feel free to just pause this and, um, and take a look at it and finish up. Also, you know, erase out any lines. Make sure that you've got everything the way you want it because our next step is that we're gonna go in and ink over this with either our Sharpie or our Micron pen. Okay guys, so now that my image is all cleaned up, I'm gonna go in with either my Sharpie or my Micron pen, and I'm literally just going to trace over my pencil marks. You guys that have been with me for a while have done this before, but we are just going to trace over all of our pencil marks in a nice clean line and then we are going to erase our pencil marks. Okay, 
Now, one thing that you can do, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause this and let you guys go ahead and ink yours in, but one thing that I wanna show you is that when we get to our shadows, I don't want you to draw the outline of the shadow. What I want you to do is take your pen at an angle. Here, I'll show you my angle. I'm holding it about like that. Um, and I'm just wiggling it back and forth. Now, if you start doing it and it, there's no ink, that means you're not holding it up high enough. So I'm gonna try and hold it, to, you know, tilt it up just a little bit more. And I'm just going to real lightly sketch some lines in here. There are lots of different ways of shading, but this is what I like to do. Um, you know, it's just a real simple indication of something, but nothing too pronounced or too dark. Okay, so that's how I do my shadows. And then I'll go ahead and erase those pencil marks. Okay, so go ahead now and you guys can pause this. I'll put it like this so you can see it while you're working and go ahead and ink everything in and then erase your pencil marks and come right back, okay? Okay, guys. So this is my inked in version. It's nice and clean and I erased out all of my pencil marks. And now we're gonna start our oil pastels. I went ahead and grabbed the colors that I'm gonna use. I have them over here. I basically want two shades of yellow, um, two shades of red, just like a reg regular red and then kind of like a reddish brown, um, a couple shades of blue and a couple shades of green, um, darker green. And then for my blues, I did light blue, medium blue and dark blue. So um, go ahead and find some of those colors and we'll get started. I'm gonna start first with my yellow, with oil pastels in particular, I like to start with my lighter colors first. So I'm gonna go ahead and color in all of my stars and my moon with my yellow. Okay, a nice light yellow. And if you guys go out of the lines or whatever, it's really okay. Okay, this is a fun, playful drawing. Um, and oil pastels aren't really sharp, so it's hard to get like in these little corners and stuff. Don't worry about it. Just do the best you can. And if you go out of it, that's fine. Certainly not gonna hurt anything. When I'm drawing, I actually try to think about what's going to be the easiest um, as far as not getting my hand into it and not smudging my drawing. Um, I'm left-handed, so sometimes I'll try to work right to left so that um, I don't set my hand on it. If you're right-handed, you might wanna work left to right so that you don't do the right side first and then have to put your hand on it to get to the left. It's just something that I do, that's how my brain works. It's not critical, but it might be helpful, helpful suggestion. So there's all of our stars and our moon. And now I'm gonna go and put kind of like radiating lines with the yellow out around our stars. I broke my own rule, I went left to right. See, that's okay, but now I have to think about where I wanna put my hand because I don't wanna put it over top of my oil pastels and smudge them. You're probably gonna smudge a little bit, but I, I just try to do the best that I can to avoid that. Okay, and I'm gonna do the one, the star that's on our gnome or that our gnome is holding as well. 
but I'm not gonna do the shoes. I'll do these down here. going to take my gold color kind of like a dark yellow light brown type color and I'm also going to put radiating lines with this color in here I'm going to give you guys two coloring options. Oh, you know what? I just realized I forgot this little guy. Let me get his little lines out. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys two coloring options because I know that this is kind of a long drawing and that we've been working on it for a while. And for some reason, my drawings lately have been taking a little longer than normal. I don't know why I've gotten complicated lately. But, um, but I understand if you guys are busy and you don't have the time to do a full color rendering of this, and that is perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna say is that when we're done with this step that we're working on now with these um, yellow and gold lines, um, I think that that's a good stopping point if you're kind of feeling like you don't want to or you don't have the time to go ahead and do the whole drawing. I think it actually looks really nice at this stage to just have the simple white and black and then a little bit of gold radiating from the, from the stars and the moon. So if you are tight on time, I think this is a perfectly acceptable stopping point Okay, and if you are going to sign off, um, thank you guys for working with me this week, and I hope you guys have a good week, and I'll, I'll see you next time. Um, if you would like to keep on drawing, I'm going to color the whole thing in. Um, it might take a half an hour. I'm not really sure, um, but if you want to stick with me, um, feel free to keep watching, okay? Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is my sky. I'm going to start out with a medium blue. So I'm gonna take this one here and I'm gonna lay it on its side. And just sort of fill the sky in you know, roughly fill the sky in. Um, I'm gonna go around my stars. I meant to go around my little piece of a hat there, but I accidentally went over it. That's okay. And about now is where you wanna start making sure that you um, keep your fingers off of the, the paper when you're drawing because it's gonna to start to smudge real bad. It feels awkward, but you get used to it eventually. There's something like that. Okay guys, so this is where we are now. So I filled in the um, the whole space with that darker blue that I had. And then after doing that, I realized that I wanted it to be a little bit darker, or at least darker in some places. 
So I found another blue, here it's actually it's this one here, that's almost black. And I used that like in these, just like, like right here, right here, just kind of like in bigger patches um, where I could just have a little bit of tonal variation. Um, now I'm gonna go back and take this color again. Color in this area around the stars. And just sort of um, bring this color out a little bit. Eventually we're gonna overlap between the gold and the blue. But I'm just not quite there yet. Right now I kind of want to just mix my yellows and my golds. Um, I mean, some of the blue gets in, that's fine. But So maybe do a little bit of gold and then do some yellow over top of it and kind of blend them together real nice, make it real nice and smooth. Okay. So I'm gonna um, stop filming and I'm gonna do that on all of my star moon spaces. Okay. Um, yeah, all, all of these, not her feet, but even in this little area here, okay? I'll leave it right here and you guys can pause on this. Okay guys, so I just colored in my stars and you know, this one here I think turned out my favorite. I um. I um, went over, after I did uh, the gold, like around the edges, I went through with my regular yellow and went back over the whole thing. And that really helped to, to kind of blend it all together. Okay, so now I'm going to take one of my kind of medium, darker blues. Let me see if I can do this. And I'm gonna just kind of fill in this space And I'm going to just kind of gently overlap with the gold. I don't want to blend it and end up with green. I mean, a little bit of green might be okay, but I don't want it to be majority green. So there, and I think that as long as you have the, the edge being jagged, I think that's okay, as long as it's not like too perfect looking. I'll do one more and then I'm gonna stop filming and let you guys finish, I'll finish mine and then we'll come back together again. Okay guys, so I have gone around with my darker blue, like I said, and I put, you know, a couple of lines inside, but generally speaking, I just did the outside edge. And what I'm doing now is that I took this lighter blue and I'm just kind of going around and um, going over top of that and making just a few strokes kind of radiating out. Um, you can do as much or as little of this as you want, but this is the next thing that I'm doing. I'm just kind of going around and just throwing some of these strokes out there. You can bring this into the yellow a little bit too if you want to kind of help smooth that transition. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my red and I'm going to color in my hat. Now this first um, layer right here is that white furry part. 
So I'm going to do red on this one and I'm going to do every other stripe red. Okay, so I'm gonna let you pause this again. And I'm gonna do every other stripe red and then I'm also going to color in the clothing as red. When I get up here to the star, I'm just gonna kind of go like this, you know, like kind of close to the edge. Maybe I can blend it in a little bit. Red and yellow blend better than blue and yellow. So um, I can, you know, bring the red in just a tiny bit over top of that gold. Okay, so color in every other stripe and then the clothing and the shoes. Okay, and then come right back. Okay guys, so I filled in all of my red. Um, what I wanna do now is on this star here, I just wanna bring this in, blend this a little bit better. Maybe go over it with the red in this one direction and then go back over it with the yellow. Maybe bring the yellow out a little bit. Something like that. Okay. Um, now, um, I'm gonna have a shadow kind of down the center. So even in my white spots, I'm gonna have just a little bit of color. That's fine. Um, and then I'm going to use a little bit of blue along this edge over here. along this edge too. Maybe a little bit of blue down here. Something like that. And then I'm going to take my white. Oh, I forgot to get my white out earlier. Here's my white. And I'm going to color in all these white stripes. Okay, so I'm going to pause this for a second and finish coloring the white stripes and you guys do the same and then come right back, okay? Okay guys, so my hat is done. I'm going to go in now with a peach color and color in this little nose. And then what I want to do is have Maybe just a little bit of a white highlight because I want to pretend like that little star is shining up on her little nose. So I'm going to put a little bit of white there and a little bit of, where's my red? Um, or you know what, maybe not red, maybe a, a, a darker peach or a pink color. Um, I don't know if that's quite dark enough. You could use a smidge of red, I guess. Blend it in well on the top of her little nose there. I'm using my finger just to blend that in a tiny bit. Okay, and then on her dress, I also, you can either use blue or like a darker burgundy to just put like a couple little shadows. I'm gonna have a shadow underneath the hat. Um, maybe like along her hair here on the front of her arms. And maybe, maybe down on the bottom of her dress, underneath her arm there. Okay, and I'm also gonna put some more shadow on the bottom of her foot. And now I'm gonna go back in with my red and go over that to kind of blend it in just a little bit.
Okay, guys, thanks for sticking with me. Those of you that are still doing this, we're very close to being done. Okay. So next, I'm going to do my trees. I'm going to color it in with my one of my darker greens. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pause this. Just color in both of your trees. Oh, and this little area back here. Color that in all the way across, okay? Okay, guys, we're really getting in the home stretch here. So I filled in all my green spaces. I just noticed I left a little blue space. Um, so we colored in all of our, our tree and our green spaces. I went ahead and put in some gray, dark gray trunks here. Um, on my trees. Um, if you want to now, you can go in and you know, just put a little bit of of a different color green to give it a little bit of shape. And same with these in the background. You can kind of just smudge in um, a little bit of a darker green on here um, and you know and maybe you want to put a little bit of this um, golden color from the um, from the star maybe the star is kind of like shining down on your tree maybe you want to put a little bit of the silver or the gold I mean the gold or the yellow in there that would certainly be acceptable Okay, um, let's see, I haven't figured out a hair color yet. I'll do that in a minute. Um, I wanna show you guys real quickly though, how to do the, um, the snow on the ground. Um, so it's nighttime. We're gonna have a little bit of blue reflection um, and shadow areas, okay? But it is gonna be mostly white because of the snow. So I'm just gonna put this blue in my shadow areas. And maybe just a few little places around like that. And then I'm gonna go over it with my white. I need to find a bigger white. Um, and then I'm just gonna go over that whole area. So here's my white, you know, to kind of, um, blend that all together. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this now, I'm gonna do my white, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I just finished up my drawing here. Um, I went back in and put a little bit more detail in my trees, I'm come down a little bit lower. I put some more colors in there. Um, one thing that I did that I wanted to tell you is that I went back into my stars and I used sort of a peach color to, um, just kind of um, go as a in-between color between my golds and my blues. Um, I was ending up with too much green that I didn't really care for. And the peach sort of neutralizes that a little bit. So I just kind of used it more like a blending tool and put, um, and just kind of went around like that um, around them. And then I also just kind of worked back and forth. Like I would put a little bit more gold in, maybe a little bit more blue, and just kind of worked with it until I got the look that I wanted. Um, I'm not sure what else I did just now. I um, I did finish her little nose, and I put some highlight color and some shadow color on her nose and her hat and her hair, her shoes. I did the blue in here for the shadow, and I went over this whole area with my white to blend it all together. And I think that's about it. So I'll just go over this real quickly in case you guys need to pause it on anything and go back and rework anything. Um, also, one other trick that I wanted to tell you is that if you end up with a color where you really don't want it, um, I don't know if I can see an example right now. You know what? 
um, I'll, it's not really that big of a deal, but like right here on her shoe, I have like a little bit of blue that got in there. Um, I happen to have nails, and so I usually just use my nail, and I will scrape that off. I don't know if you can see that I just got rid of that blue right there. Here's a little bit more on this one. Um, I wanted to let you know that's a technique that you can do to scrape off some of the layers if you've done something that you don't like. Like right now, I just got that red in there. So now maybe I'll try to scrape that off a little. Um, now, most of you may, may not have, have nails. Um, you could use a, a butter knife or maybe even a fork, like the tines of a fork to, um, to kind of scrape that off. And then after you do that, you can go back in and, um, you know, go over it again and try to work that in a little bit. But that's a technique that you can use sometimes if you end up with color that you don't like. I actually did that a little bit with my stars. If it started to get too green, I would scrape out little bits of green, um, you know, scrape the wax off right down to the paper. Um, and then you can go back over it with another color and um, kind of smooth that out some. So anyway, that's just a technique that I wanted to let you know about. And um, I hope you guys had fun on your assignment. I think it looks kind of cute. Um, make sure you send me pictures and I'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye. Take care.